Hello everyone. I'm back and uh, this is my second uh, part of uh, teaching of mathematics in an online environment. I hope uh, you must have watched the first video where I talked about teacher preparedness. That is, uh, it is important from a teaching learning perspective that uh, teachers should be prepared for online environment in terms of skills, knowledge, and attitude. Now, in this presentation, I would be talking about online classroom. That is, where and how is my online classroom? So I will be sharing with you certain things. So a big question is, like, I have my physical math classroom where uh, the children, they come and they sit on their normal desk or sometimes in the laboratory on tables and chairs. And then they have uh, friends with them where they are connecting with them, collaborating with them. There are lots of creative discussions taking place. And as a teacher, I have uh, with me a writing board that is instant writing board and a smart board where the content is available and I can access to that. Plus, sometimes the possibility is children go to the computer lab and they do certain stuff. So this is what was happening uh, in the physical classroom. But now the scenario has changed and we have moved to teaching and learning in an online environment. So the big question is where and how I will see my online teaching classroom. So there are certain questions. I, I would say there are more questions in the mind as a teacher. Will I be able to engage my students? Will I be able to create a space for them for collaboration? Will I be able to set up a space where they are learning in a safe way? That means uh, they, they feel themselves safe, like they used to feel safe with their friends, with teachers in the school. So will I be able to share my course material at one place so that when I'm not there, children can access that material? Sometimes uh, due to net connections, they are not able to attend their online classes. So. There must be some space where they can go at their convenience and then refer to that course material. And then another question is, uh, will I be able to see uh, my students work or will I be able to reply to their queries? Will I be able to take up the assessments like I used to have uh, formative assessments in the class? Will I be able to keep on doing the creative stuff like we used to do in the school? Will I be able to take care of their emotional well-being? Normally in a class, there are many of ways in which we used to connect with the children, just sitting with them and then uh, patting at their back, talking to them. I mean, there, there, there were certain ways in which we were able to connect with the children and uh, the teacher was able to establish a close bond with the children now another question is will i be able to help them acquire their life skills and uh, will i be able to take care of the individual needs like needs of some children with special needs so uh, keeping in view all these questions in mind uh, we explored lots of stuff online and then uh, we found that answer to all questions was a big yes and it is a big yes and uh, as a teacher it is important like if you see the previous video and in this video also uh, these five points are quite relevant in current scenario that uh, catering to needs of different types of learners paying attention to the individual child and individual queries and then connecting the subject with the developing and enhancing of life skills which is really really important 
and i hope you know that uh, world health, health organization has uh, listed 10 set of life skills which uh, are to be connected with different subject teachings and of course in teaching of mathematics uh, we have been trying our best to uh, enhance and develop those life skills and to set up a scope of thinking beyond the textbooks is another thing which we have to remember and uh, like we used to have mathematics enrichment so here in the online environment also we have to set up a scope for self-exploration research-based learning project-based lear learning which is of course beyond the textbooks and establish a connection of relevance of the subject in daily life so these are certain things certain questions in the mind and they want to see like now how is my online classroom okay 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 we will take you there and uh, get set go so i'm really happy to share with you as a teacher that uh, if you have in your school a leader who has that vision and clarity of what is to be done then how it is to be done then it really really uh, smoothen the process of implementation so in our school our school principal decided to go for G Suite. So we have uh, G Suite uh, I, uh, in our school. And uh, what is this G Suite? It is a suite for of free Google tools and services which are tailored as per the school needs. And in a G Suite uh, for education, it is free. So we have uh, Google Meet, that is a video conferencing tool and the children are able to have a face-to-face -face, uh, video conferencing with the teacher and the teacher can have a connection with the parents and the connection with the colleagues connection with the principal so this is really helpful another is google keep for taking up notes planning execution everything and gmail you already know google drive for storing all the content and then organization also and then google docs google sheets google slides and google drawings and jamboard all these are very effective and very useful as we can use them in our day-to-day -day teaching learning uh, not from the teacher's perspective but from children perspective also and uh, when we want to engage children in collaborative activities we can make use of all these tools then there comes another one which is called uh, google classroom and you see that i have taken a big red arrow which is going to a green box in which you can see human icons and the boundary yellow boundary so this is the google classroom so this classroom helps students and teachers to organize the assignments boost up collaboration and foster better communication you see how beautifully google has designed this uh, logo it is quite uh, interesting so now i am uh, taking you to this uh, google classroom and I, I think you must be having one question in your mind like uh, if i do not have g suite id can i create that google classroom yes my dear friends there is no problem in that uh, you still can create a google classroom with your normal gmail and uh, you see that when you have a normal gmail then in that case go to that log into your gmail then uh, go to your uh, nine uh, this uh, boxes icon uh, nine dot icon and uh, then there you will find that google classroom button so you can also create it and if you have a mobile also in that case also you can download the google classroom app from the play store and do the needful so it's both way like you can work from the laptop as well as from the mobile if you have a g suite id or if you have a normal gmail you can have your google classroom so there is no problem now i am going to share with you like what all we can do in the google classroom so i'm taking a tour of my google classroom so when you see a google classroom uh, from teacher's perspective there are four tabs on the top 
stream, classwork, people, and grades. In the stream section, you can see that this is for a teacher where uh, the teacher is posting instructions for the students. Like a uh, normal day when we are meeting with the students, we are writing, dear students, today in the maths class at 10 a.m., we will learn to find surface area and volume of cube and cuboid. The meet link will be available five minutes to 15 minutes before the class. So check the classwork tab. See you. Simple message uh, given by a teacher. And the stream is used by the teacher for writing the messages. Now, if you see, there is a setting box here. Uh, when you click on the settings, you can uh, write down the class details, description, and then uh, you can do certain settings. Like I have kept a setting on the stream that students can only comment. So there are two more things like student can post and comment. Some teachers like that students can uh, post their stuff on the stream but here in my classroom i have turned it to students can only comment sometimes teachers can choose this also only teachers can post or comment it's like purely your need and you can make certain selections on the basis of that then uh, there is a show deleted item toggle if you have deleted something teacher can only see you can go for that and if you want you can open this toggle by giving uh, parents an access to the work which has been done by the students another you have the meet link which is available here if you open this toggle this meet link will be visible to the student on the top of the google classroom so now I am uh, sharing with you a simple step like how to set up your Google Classroom. So now you can see this is a plus icon. Click on the plus icon and click on create class. And you can set up a class name. Say, for example, I'm writing maths enrichment. And this is section A. And the subject is mathematics. OK, your classroom is ready now. How you have to use this classroom, I'm going to share that with you. There are lots and lots of possibilities. And uh, you can uh, do a lot of creative stuff in your Google Classroom. So now in a normal uh, teaching learning process, you tell me what all you do. OK, interesting. So in a normal teaching learning process, the teacher is sharing with the children the content. The teacher is teaching in the classroom. And in a normal classroom, the students are doing their work in the notebook and teachers are checking their notebooks. Then teachers are assigning some assignments and then students are attempting those assignments. Teacher is checking those assignments, giving the feedback. Then students are doing some uh, activities in, in which some collaboration is taking place. That means group activities are taking place. Sometimes individual activities are taking place, things like that. So it's a normal classroom. So now you see that in the classwork tab, when you click on the classwork tab, there is a create button. So this is quite, quite useful for all the teachers. You can assign the work to your class here by number one, create assignments and questions. Number two, use topics to organize the classwork into modules or units and then you can order work the way you want students to do it so i am going to share with you how i have organized my google classroom then we will come back here so here you will see that in the classwork tab on the left side all topics are listed what are these topics these are the topics in which the entire classroom has been divided so recently, the students have gone for the holidays. So holiday homework was assigned to them. Then uh, certain tabs have been created for submission of the holidays homework. See how we have assigned it. So this is the material which has been given to them. So they can view what is the holidays homework given to them. And then uh, this is the submission of task one. See, wow, students have started submitting the work also. And I have started grading as well. So here it is, 
holiday homework submission of task 2 and this is submission of task 3 and then holidays homework of maths enrichment that is something which is beyond the textbooks so you see that uh, this is the main topic holidays homework is the main topic and under this variety of uh, things have been posted for the children now see this is google meet so whenever children are coming for the meet the teacher is posting the material here so when you click on view material so you can uh, get the google meet link and see here uh, the organization like how on which date which class happened and what was done in that particular class entire information is available over here now i am going to share with you about uh, chapter content how a teacher can organize it you see that here here i am taking an, an example of the chapter 14 mensuration of class 8 see how it was done it started on 14th of may so e book was posted for the children because uh, some of the children are not having the textbooks so it is very important that uh, children should have that material with them so the chapter content was shared with them then an activity this is a live activity which took place which 2d or 3d shape do you see around yourself so children were given this task and they were sitting at their homes and then they looked here and there and instantly they responded to the question which was given to them you see how beautifully they have answered so i'm coming back here again so this is the second thing which uh, happened in that particular chapter and then after that a warm up activity was given to them just for checking their previous knowledge so this was the collaborative document which was shared with them then uh, topic 1 was taken up this is regarding area of the trapezium and this is the video which was recorded earlier to share with them uh, how to visualize the area of the trapezium by an activity and children performed that activity in the classroom and then worksheet 1 two questions were discussed in the live classroom then videos were shared with them certain homework was given to them and the children they performed that assignment then uh, another activity was given to them in a flipped classroom model like watch this video after watching this video then do certain set of questions so this uh, children can do at their own pace and in the next class if there is some doubt in the particular question the children can ask from the teacher then in next you see some more questions were taken up and uh, it was given to the students as a class work so they were solving that in front of the teacher and they were asked to attach the solution so you see that uh, uh, during the class was on some of the solutions were discussed and then children posted their answers in the particular document then enrichment activities were was done with them how to name the polygons and here a video was used previously recorded video of a class where uh, children got uh, excited to see their senior students so when the children they saw this video they got motivated and then they started sharing about this activity by turning on their cameras and then speaking so this helped in enhancing their communication skills getting connected and then they started learning something which was beyond the textbook so now a naming a polygon activity was given to them and before that an applet geogebra applet was used 
and you see how interestingly children participated in this and this is again the use of google doc and uh, in this google document you see how this collaborative activity was assigned this document was shared with all the students in one go they started joining the document and then before giving this activity i prepared this document roll number 1 then uh, i gave them this write down name of the polygon having number of sides equal to your roll number plus 2 because you know that uh, roll number 1 will not be able to write any polygon then 1 plus 2 is 3 and the smallest polygon is a triangle so then i told them okay you make the figure of a regular polygon having the n sides n plus 2 sides what is n n is the roll number n is n sides that is n is roll number plus number 2 so they started making it using the applet on geogebra and uh, see how beautifully all the polygons these are all regular polygons so it helped in enhancing their creativity thinking something beyond the textbook imagination and see as we increase the number of sides see the look and feel of a polygon how a polygon is appearing great so i'm coming back here now then i shared with them a playlist with of videos of the entire chapter this was uh, recorded some videos were recorded by screen casting some were recorded live in the classroom and some were recorded using the mobile and uh, all were uploaded on the youtube and then the playlist is given to the students for their ready watch then we did an activity on making a cube using uh, the net and th this was a hands on activity which they performed and uh, here my blog helped me a, lo a lot like this was already done few years ago so i used this resource in my math classroom now you see that uh, this was shared with them they did this activity at home and then in the classroom on the next day they brought their three dimensional objects like cube was shared with them and then i asked them to make uh, another other three dimensional objects prisms pyramids so that we can do verification of eulers formulas on that after that some problem solving was done discussions were done and worksheet questions assignments were done and then another day for 10 minutes we did this playing with unit cube activities using an online tool i hope you must be aware of uh, nctm so let me share about that i will be talking about this uh, in my next video because this is quite an interesting resource for maths teachers illuminations.nctm.org and uh, from this uh, website i found this uh, illumination drawing tool and on this illumination drawing tool because uh, children were learning in the online environment so i shared the link of this uh, drawing tool with them in the chat box and they did beautiful experimentation uh, by, on uh, playing with the unit cube see how interesting it is and how easy it is to use this tool in the math classroom and we did lots of uh, brainstorming and good questions on the basis of uh, the activity on the basis of the shapes which they made using this particular tool and you see here they designed this and we framed interesting questions on the basis of uh, the shapes which they made so this is the power and potential of uh, using the uh, Uh, online classroom and here it's on uh, google classroom so see videos can be shared how videos were shared on the google classroom and then another activity was done this is again a live activity and then we played a quiz on kahoot 
so the best part of this the google classroom is like in my previous video i shared with you my favorite eight tools in which i talked about flipgrid and i talked about kahoot so in the google classroom if you see in one of the chapters i have used integration of flipgrid where children recorded their video responses and shared with us and here in the kahoot we played the multiple choice questions in a quiz way we played true false questions in a quiz way on this kahoot so interestingly uh, it is very simple to organize the content in the google classroom now you you will be no interested in knowing like uh, how to add or invite students in the google classroom so i'm taking you to the dummy class here when you go to the people tab then you see teachers and students if you want any colleague of yours to add uh teach as a co-teacher then you can invite her or you can invite your co-teacher click on this type the email id and then the teacher can join it but remember one thing that if you have a g suite id that is you have your institutional id then in that case the admin settings like it depends on the admin settings also here we have said that like we can invite co-teachers of the same school so that means the teacher who is having the g suite id can join in similarly the students here the the students who have the official ids can join in so it is a closed safe network for the students as well as the teacher now when you have uh, your google classroom with gmail id then you can invite your uh, colleagues and your uh, students having gmail ids so now i am coming back to the class work how you can add using this create button so you can see you can create an assignment how you can create an assignment write the title here say for example i am writing assignment 1 and in the bracket i am writing name of the chapter squares and square roots if you wish to write some instructions for the students please write it and then click on create if you want to create the assignment here so you can create an assignment based on google doc slides sheets drawings and forms here most often teachers are using google docs so when i create a google doc you can paste here the assignment assignment what is the name of the chapter squares and square roots click on untitled document the name will go up there and here you can write down question 1 question 2 question 3 so on write the questions here or instructions after that you see here it is written students can view file if you want students to solve this particular questionnaire in their notebook then and you don't want them to submit to you then this is fine that students can view the file but if you want that students to solve the assignment in the document or they do the assignment in the notebook and in the document they share the images of the work so what we will do is make a copy for each student i am repeating if you want students to view this as an assignment so just select student can view file and they they can read whatever you have written over there and do the work in the notebook and you have to write the instructions here in the instruction section and if you want that students have to submit their work to you then make a copy for each student then they can edit it and they can write submit their work in the assignment then give points say for example this is for 10 marks and if it is ungraded mark it ungraded 
if you want to assign some time like due date and time you can give some due date or time say for example they have to submit it up to june 18 time is optional you can assign even the time also and then don't forget to choose the topic so here no topic is here written so if you are writing assignments so i i have a tab called assignments so whenever like in my math classroom whenever i am giving assignments which are graded like which have certain marks say for example it is of 10 marks so i write i post them in the assignments tab it helps me also that these assignments are for assessments so assignments and then if you want that it should go in the chapter tab so that you can also do right here squares and square roots that is the name of the chapter i'll show you how i have done it is ungraded but but they have to submit it and then click on assign so the message will go to all the students that the teacher has assigned some uh, assignment for the chapter squares and square root now you see here plus create you can have a quiz assignment that means you can create a google quiz and please don't forget to open this uh, toggle by default it is open if you close it then you cannot do grading you can open it i will be making uh, another video on uh, using this uh, quiz on uh, in the google classroom so where i will be sharing up in details about this uh, creating the google quiz in the google classroom same way you can assign points and then due date and then topic things like that so i am coming back so another aspect is question this is very very interesting before i do this i would like to show the classroom see here it is how i have used uh, this question thing in my classroom i have uh, created a topic called think and tell this think and tell is question tab and in this also you can get responses in video form like i used flipgrid i mentioned you earlier so i did one activity like what is your favorite number and why so the students they recorded their responses and uh, shared in the flipgrid similarly we had a creative discussion on why do we say division by zero is not possible another discussion on what do you think if i say all perfect squares are natural numbers but not vice versa things like that so basically for uh, creative discussions you can add on this uh, section of uh, question option in the google classroom so the process is very simple click on question write the question here and then uh, the students can reply below that or you can assign some space so it's the same way you do that so another thing is you can post a material like uh, suppose you have a video on youtube so what you will do so you search for that youtube video and then uh, copy the url of that video say for example i am taking from the playlist squares and square roots roots so this is how the playlists have been created say for example i have to share with them about uh, this uh, facts about the perfect squares so i'll copy the youtube link and write on the title facts about perfect squares i don't something in the description and then i will not create it material has to be added 
so click on add and it's a youtube video so click on youtube and here paste the url which you have copied copy and then add how simple it is and don't forget to write the topic so it's squares and square roots and see this is not to be graded and not no marks are to be given it's a material so i hope you have understood the difference between adding a material and then creating assignment quiz assignment and question so my dear friends using a google classroom is a great idea for having your online classroom and now i am coming back to my presentation and here i am going to share with you the impact the impact is incredible as you know that here children are learning in a joyful way of course in a safe environment they are able to communicate express themselves and they are sharing their work and there is a connection between teacher and the students students are participating in the discussions they are creating on their own sharing their work they can see each other's work they are able to think critically logically and demonstrate also and as a teacher of course i am a happy teacher and the journey is on so my dear friends in my next video i will be talking about another important aspect of teaching mathematics in an online environment thank you very much for watching your questions and uh, feedback is very valuable please uh, post in the comment box i will try to reply back to your queries in my next video thank you so much